session we will see about how to choose a statistical test for analysis of data. Let's start with a small simple analogy. We want to find the measure, we want to measure the weight of a ball. I give you the choice of four devices, say a physical balance, a thermometer, a ruler and a volumetric flask. Which of these four devices would you select to measure the weight of a ball? It's obviously the physical balance, isn't it? Right. Now, if I say that I want to measure the temperature of the ball, then the device changes to thermometer. If I say we want to measure the volume of the ball, it becomes a volumetric flask. Now, you can see that as the variable which we want to measure changes, the device also changes. Same way, why do we have so many statistical tests? We have different types of variables and different types of analysis. So as the type of analysis changes, the type of statistical test also changes. Now let me take one more simple analogy. I go and ask a boy, okay, I give him a ball and again I ask the same question. How will you measure the weight of a ball using these, any of these four devices? When do you think this boy will answer, I will choose an appropriate tool? Yes, if he does not know which tool among the four he has to use, now he will tell that I will use the most appropriate tool. Same way, whenever you write, the most appropriate statistical test will be used for analysis of data, then it clearly means only one thing, that you don't have any idea about which statistical test to be used for this analysis of data. So henceforth, please don't write the data will be analyzed by most appropriate statistical test. So this session is make you to will make you to find out which test you will choose so that you will not be able to write like this. Right. Let's go into this session first. Now let's see what are the factors which determine this analysis so that we will be able to approach it properly. There are five factors which determine the analysis of uh, choosing a statistical test for analysis of data. Let's see one by one. The first factor is the type of variable. We have already seen the data can be of two types, isn't it? The first one we have seen it as numerical. And the second type of data we have already seen, it can be categorical, isn't it? Right. Now, numerical again can be, it can be continuous or it can be discrete. One example for a continuous numerical variable, blood pressure, body weight. For numerical discrete values, number of people visiting OPD or visual analog scale measured in a scale of 0 to 100. Again, it's a numeric but discrete because it does not take any decimal points. Categorical, we have already seen uh, a classical example of a dichotomous outcome, whether adverse effect, the patient experienced adverse effect or didn't experience. The patient got Q, not Q. So these are all some types of categorical data. So first we need to find out our data is numerical, continuous or numerical discrete and or is it categorical. So that's the first factor which affects. One more point which we need to remember at this time is if it is a numerical continuous data, it is usually summarized as means. If it is a numerical discrete data, many times it does not follow normal distribution and it is summarized as medians. Categorical data are usually summarized as proportion. So we will just keep this knowledge in mind and see how it is of help. So the first thing you need to know what type of variable do we have, right? Now let's look into the second factor. The second factor which we need to know is what is the type of analysis we want to do? Again, it can be of three types. The first subdivision is we can compare two or more groups. So it's, it's a comparison. The second subtype is we want to find out the relation between two variables.
which is called as correlation. The third type of analysis can be predicting one variable from other. which is called as regression. Now, let's take one by one. Comparison can be comparison of means if our type of variable had been continuous numerical, then we will be comparing means. It can be comparison of median if it is a numerical variable but does not follow normal distribution. The classical example I showed as VAS score or Abgar score or if it is a dichotomous data it will be comparison of proportion between two groups. So comparison can be either comparison of mean, comparison of median or comparison of proportion. So we need to fix any one of these. The second type is we have one group but two variables we are measuring. We don't have here we have two or more than two groups. Here we don't have two groups. We have only one group but we have two variables. Let, let me give a simple example to explain this. We are measuring body weight in one group of patients. Say 50 people we have in that 50 group of people. 50 people in one group we are measuring body weight. In the same group I am also measuring blood pressure. Now I want to know whether as body weight increases, blood pressure increases or as body weight increases, blood pressure decreases. So I want to find out is there a relation between these two variables. So please remember these two variables are measured in the same subject in that one group. So we have only one group here. Now the third type of analysis is predicting one variable from the other which is called as regression analysis. Again this is also very simple. Here again we have only one group, but now here I want to predict one variable from another. Say for example, if a person of 50 kilo comes to my outpatient department, what would be his blood pressure? If I want to find out that mathematically, it becomes predicting one variable from another. So I want to predict blood pressure from the body weight which I have measured in this. So these are the three different types of analysis. So we need to fix any one among that. So that will be the second step for doing the choosing the statistical test, right? Now let's look into the third type, uh, third factor, the third factor which dictates the selection of statistical test is the number of groups and data sets. It can be one group, it can be two groups, it can be more than two groups. Now I will explain to you about this. Let us take a study in which I have a group of 50 people. I measure their blood pressure, I give a drug, after the drug I again measure the blood pressure. What is the effect of drug on the blood pressure I want to show. I have only one group, all the measurements I am doing, I have one baseline data, intervention, then post intervention data. So here one group, but I have two data sets. This can be one type. The same thing, I have only one group, say 50, again 50 hypertensive patients, I give an antihypertensive, but I measure blood pressure after one hour after the drug. 6 hours after the drug, 12 hours after the drug and 24 hours after the drug. So now I have again one group but at least 5 data sets. One at baseline and at 4 other time points. So this can be one. So one group either 2 data sets or one group more than 2 data sets. You need to fix that. The other way it can be 2 different groups. Let's take the same example of I want to evaluate an antihypertensive. I take a group of 50 hypertensive patients. I give this new drug. I have a totally different 50 set of 50 people hypertensives. 
I give a standard drug to them. Now you can see here, this 50 is a totally different group, which is not related to the first one. I have another group of 50 hypertensive patients. So these are totally two different groups and I get data from each. So I have two groups and two data sets. Now, sometimes, let's take the same example. I have three group of antihypertensive, three group of hypertensive patients. To one group, I give a new drug. To other group, I give a calcium channel blocker. To the third group, I give AC inhibitors. To the fourth group, might be diuretics. So I have more than two groups. Here in this case, four groups. And all these four are totally different. So this is an example of more than two groups. And I have more than two data sets. So the third factor is number of groups and you need to fix any one of these. Do I have one group and two data set? One group and more than two data set? Two group and two data set? Or more than two groups and more than two data sets? So that's the third factor which you need to fix in to select which statistical test you want to do for analysis of data. Right. Now let's go into the fourth factor which dictates the selection of statistical test. The fourth factor is the study design. Now, in scientific research, all of you would have read about study design. There is a lot of various study design, cross-sectional case control, cohort, RCT. In terms of statistics, study design, we mean there is only two types of study design. Please remember that. The first one is called as unpaired or some people call it as independent. What does this mean? Again, please remember this word independent. It's very self-explanatory. There are two or more than two groups which are not related to each other, which are independent. Right? So here we have two or more than two groups of totally different set of subjects. So that's called as unpaired design. Right? To quote an example, I have a group of 50 hypertensive patients. I give one drug to the other 50 and hypertensive patients belonging to a totally different 50 people. I give another. So this is a classical example of unpaired design or independent design or unmatched. The third, second type of design is called as paired design or sometimes called as matched. Again, the term is very self-explanatory. The readings of readings which are got from this group are matched to each other. So what do we mean? I have only one group. Before giving a drug, I measure and after giving a drug, I measure. So I have two data set, one group, two data set. So this type of design is called as paired design. These two data are paired to one single subject. They always go as a pair. You cannot put before data of one person to after data of someone else. Right? So that's why this is called as pair. Or they are matched to each other. That's why it's called as match design. So that's the fourth factor which you need to decide. Is it a pair type of design or is it an unpaired type of design? The last type, the last factor which we need to consider before we go on into the selection of statistical test is what is the distribution? So the fifth factor which we need to find out is distribution. Again we need to fix whether it follows normal distribution. Again we have seen the rule of thumb. All body parameters follow normal distribution except a very few like antibody titer. So bodily parameters like blood weight, sorry, body weight, blood pressure, glucose, cholesterol level, all these things are classical examples. Or does it follow non-normal distribution? Classical examples of non-normal distribution we have already seen 
any parameter measured as ranks or scores always or usually does not follow normal distribution. The third type or is it a binomial distribution or dichotomous or is your data dichotomous or if you want to say in terms of distribution it becomes a binomial. Bi means two, isn't it? Right. So you need to fix any one of these. Is it a normal distribution or is it a non-normal distribution or is it a dichotomous type of data or binomial distribution. So any one of these three you need to fix. Now if you have fixed all these five parameters it becomes very very easy for you to find out which statistical test you need to select for analysis of data. Now let's take a small example and try to work out this. Let's take an example of I have two group of 50 diabetic patients. Each, each group has 50 diabetic patients. They are totally two different groups. To one group I give metformin. The other group I am giving a new drug. I want to measure what is the change in the reduction in blood glucose level and find out is the new drug more effective than metformin. Let's take this is the scenario and I want to find out which statistical test to be used for analysis of data. Now again there are five steps which you need to go one by one and if you fix this very very easily you can do. I will uh, stress that please go step wise you will never be wrong. Right? Let's take each one, one, one step by one. The first thing you need to write is what is the aim of the study. Now here the aim is to evaluate the anti-diabetic effect. Effect of new drug, isn't it? Right. So that's our aim. The second step what you need to write is what is the parameter you want to analyze? Please remember that in a trial like this, we might have at least 5 or 6 parameters to be analyzed. So uh, it goes without saying that for each parameter then you need to select which test to be used. As we told, like the ball, the weight of the ball then we need some other tool. So if it is for the uh, blood glucose level, it becomes thing. If it is number of people having adverse effect, it becomes a different. So here, Let's take, I want to see the anti-diabetic effect. So what is the parameter? It becomes reduction in blood glucose. Simply, right. The third parameter is number, number of groups or data sets. And what are they? Now here I told you we have totally two different groups, isn't it? So two groups and two data sets I have, isn't it? Two groups and two data sets. What are the groups? The first group is group receiving metformin. The second group is group receiving new drug. The fourth step which you need to do is what is the study design? What is the study design in this example? They are totally two different groups. So it is untracked. The fifth factor as we have seen, we need to see what is the type of distribution. So the distribution blood glucose is a body parameter, it follows normal distribution. There is a sixth factor which we need to write here is what is the type of analysis. I will just write it here. Now here we already saw that there are three major types. It is comparison of or association or regression. Isn't it? Correlation or regression. Now, here we want to compare between two groups. So it is comparison, isn't it? I don't want to predict or I don't want to find out the association. It's comparison of what? Is it mean or median or proportion? What is my parameter? Reduction in blood glucose. How will I summarize it? As means. So it is comparison of mean between two groups. 
so it becomes comparison of mean right sometimes this is written third right so or doesn't matter wherever you write it doesn't matter right so these are the six steps which you need to fix or which you need to write so i will urge you please go step by step you will never be wrong in that now once you have done that let's look into this simple table which we have reproduced from uh, practical approach to postgraduate this pg dissertation second edition of this book now this table has three rows row 1 row 2 row 3 let's first look into row 1 normal distribution mean or comparison of means second row is non normal distribution where you want to compare or variable which are summarized this medians third row is a dichotomous data which are summarized this proportions now let's look into the column now column you can see you have again three major columns this is one column and the next two columns the first column which is big which has four subdivided columns is comparison so it is comparison of two or more data sets isn't it the second group the second column is association finding relation between two variables the third column you can see is regression predicting one variable from another now what we need to do is we need to fix the row first now let's take this example now what is our data type distribution is normal distribution so and what we want to do comparison of mean isn't it now now now, now look at it and tell me whether we have to fix row 1 or row 2 or row 3 it's row 1 isn't it because if this is normal distribution which is summarized as mean right so we have fixed row 1 for this example now let us fix the column column let's see it is compare now what we want to do what is our type of analysis i want to comparison of means now let me see here how many groups i have i have two groups two data sets i have and my design is unpaired now let me fix which broad column it comes to it comes to comparison isn't it because it's not association it's not regression now comparison of what two data sets so i have comparison of two data sets now let's go again what is the design it's unpaired so comparison of two data sets and unpaired so i have fixed now which column i belong to for this particular scenario i belong to row 1 and among the two data sets i belong to unpaired now draw a imaginary line connecting the row you fixed and the column you fixed you end up in the test called as unpaired t test so for this particular scenario the test to be used is unpaired t test are we clear so if you follow all these six steps properly and use this table for any type of scenario you can very confidently find out and very easily find out which statistical test you should use for analysis of data so to summarize there are five factors which are which we need to know to select which statistical test we want to use it is what type of variable we have what type of analysis we want to do how many groups and how many data sets we have what is the type of study design in statistical means it's paired or unpaired and what type of distribution of data are we dealing with once we have fixed these five things go step wise write these all these things then with the help of table we need to fix the row and then with the we need to fix the column draw imaginary line and where does it meet that particular test is the statistical test which you have to use for analysis of data again i repeat that for in a particular study you might have five or 10 variables which you want to analyze so for each variable you need to find the particular test say for example here if it is blood glucose it has come to unpaired t test the same if i want to find out if my parameter is number of people or the percentage or proportion of people having adverse effect then the variable completely changes it will be a totally different test so for each variable it will always change and you need to look into that right so that's all if you have any doubts please get back to us thank you very much